Let's see if I can remember back that far. <laughs> uh, well, really, I suppose what, what sparked my involvement in, in, in radical politics really was the war in, the war in Vietnam and the fact that at that particular time, in the late 60s, early 70s, I mean, young men were in the draft pool. And before there was even a lottery, everybody who was over 18 was sub possibly subjected to being drafted into the military. And I think that really galvanized a lot of activism. And the fact that they, that they didn't have a lottery meant that the entire pool of plus 18 year olds was under threat of being sent to, you know, to Vietnam, but it also meant that their families were, were, you know, were affected as well. So that's kind of what galvanized me. I'd say along with the assassination of Martin Luther King, kind of was, it, was, it, was a bit of a spark. And then I was at UC Santa Barbara in 1970 when some students, and I wasn't there, but I probably would have been if I hadn't been home asleep, but some students you know, burned down a Bank of America there. And that led to the declaration of martial law in the, in the student community where I, where I lived, which kind of changed my understanding of politics and the relationship of the states and authority and democracy and all those kinds of things. So, yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how it began. So how did you view, I mean, the burning down of the Bank of America, for example, how did you see that? What did you think when you experienced that? Well, I was a little surprised when I woke up and the bank wasn't there anymore. But, uh, <laughs> um, well, you know, at that time, you know, we were kind of walking a tightrope about whether or not to stick with, you know, with nonviolence and, 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 and violence. So I think a lot of us were not, I mean, I wouldn't have chosen to burn down the bank or, but, um, I mean, I also wasn't going to go and try to turn in the people who did it. And subsequently, I, they, they came out, like, within a couple of days, they had put up a prefab bank back where that one was. And um, so some people went, you know, we went out at night and demonstrated around the bank, and some people started throwing, like, Molotov cocktails at it. And, I mean, the Molotov cocktails fell short, but then we had some, some football players who decided that they were going to go and tackle the guy who threw the Molotov cocktail. So he went running down this way, and the football players went running down this way, and then me and another person went to sort of be the, to make an intervention. This guy ran down on a, like an alley or something, and so there was these big football players, and me and another guy kind of standing in between, and, and we sort of stood the football players off, and they, and they ran away, so. Well, they didn't run away, I don't know. They, did, they decided not to do whatever they wanted to do. I don't think I was that scary, but you know, long-haired hippies sometimes scared people. <laughs> Did you feel that the perception of things like burning down uh, Bank of America at that time period is different than it is now? Yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, we. If you, I mean, if you go back and look at the statistics and the figures for you know, like bombings and acts of violence against the war. I mean, we're we're talking about a war where you know, two to three million Vietnamese were killed. You know, and. I mean, yeah, about fifty-one thousand Americans died, but Americans, but but um, but you know, we're talking about a level of devastation that was really just staggering, and the U.S. government was 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 leading this. So the the, the notion of having uh, the notion of nonviolence became a little bit more pro progressively difficult to to swallow in the face of that those violent acts by the you know by the government. 